Okay, in the thread on Blender Artist, I was talking about using the shrink wrap modifier to create a nice sort of pipe join on a surface. It, not something I came up with, it's something I've recently learned, and it was from this chap's video channel, Penfinity. Um, he's got a lot of videos on there that I heartily recommend going over. Uh, the stuff on beveling, uh, modeling analysis, dynamic cuts and things like that all very useful info um, really worth looking at so I recommend having a nose at that and so sort of to the thing in hand of adding a, a button to a cylinder just add a cylinder and I'll just scale this 0.25 shift Z just so it looks more like, oh, I'll start the keys as well, that'd be an idea. And then always make sure to apply the scale, or funky things happen. And then just go to another layer, add another cylinder, crank up the number of vertices, so I'm going to say 200 for pure overkill. And again, I'll use F3 so I can apply the same resize then F3 and apply the transform scale so I've done exactly the same to both cylinders and what I'll do is I'll call this one target go back to my other layer pull up the shrink wrap modifier and call that the target right and then I can go into here and I can start think about adding things. I use a control R to put a loop roughly where I want the centre of the item to be. Then I'll do a control B to bevel that. And then just add the number of cuts I'm rolling my mouse wheel here. Like that to sort of so that's going to be roughly the size of it and so if you wanted another one up there you could do the same sort of thing I mean there's nothing to stop you doing that adding your number of cuts and then scaling that on the Z it's a similar thing I just find the bevel to be a bit more intuitive in terms of what I'm doing I shouldn't that up a bit Right, so they're going to what we do then is select everything. We're going to add a vertex group and assign everything to that group. There's a reason for that, I'll show you in a bit. So select that one item, do a control plus to grow it. Uh, obviously the bigger you grow it the the smoother your button's gonna be, so based on the number of boundary points and then I'll do W to pull the selection loop tools make sure you've got that add-on thing and choose circle I normally have that assigned to an alt W keyboard because I use it so much so there it is you can scale that in a bit and that'll be hugging the surface now what I'll do we're doing E Y so I'm extruding on the Y in this case and then I'll remove these from the group go in here and say use that group so everything but those items now cling to that sphere and they don't if I assign them to the group as you can see they shrink back onto the sphere so make sure you remove them scale Y on the zero to get a nice flat thing and so you can do that as that. So if I sort of take just one and I only do it once, then do an Alt W and then and just E return, push it out, remove them from the group, scale Y zero. I can now actually apply that. throw a smooth on it 
and the first thing I do is I always turn on auto smooth and then basically you can start doing it now you you can either select all of these as control shift and click so it's picking shortest path and I'll do an F and make it one face I to insert E Y to push it back Shift D E Y to pull it forward E Y pull it forward a bit scale E return pull it forward a bit on the Y scale I just pull them a bit to make it more like a button Right now, you have two ways you can apply these. You can either do it within editor. Actually, if I just boom, boom, push that back for now, or you can use the bevel modifier. Okay, you go in, make the profile one, and if I turn on all edges, you can see what's happening with this and all right just make it on angle make the angle small like 45 all right take that down all right 35 then and you can see the downside of that is it's beveling this if you've got enough detail it'll only affect that so if you were only doing that, you could do that. Give it one segment, and you can get a nice edge loop all the way all around it. But due to the low geometry on the other one above, you're not going to get away with that. So what I'd do is I would alt-click that loop, then I'd select the the boundary loop, which I have assigned to a keyboard shortcut then alt shift uh, and click on that so I've got that one same thing control B and again I've got my profile to one segments to two and there's my loop cut and I can apply the same there as well control B and if I want to apply the same sort of to those hold shift and select that as well I can again use the F3 and use bevel and that gives exactly the same bevel so when I come out let's turn them off and then I do a con and then you've got that so if I go into subsurf now you've got very clean apart from the top and bottom because I've not applied a bevel on them so I could do the same there select that select that F3 bevel and so with subsurf you've got that without subsurf looks like that so if you want to tidy that up a bit you just I'd probably just delete those two alt text select that loop and do a control B set the profile back down to 0.5 and just increase the segments likewise the r get rid of the edge loops and then F3 and bevel and there you are so that's just a really quick and easy way of doing it now obviously let's say depending on how many points you, you create depends on how round this becomes. Uh, if you if you are throwing a subsurf on it, it's less important. It's just here I'd probably be applying an edge loop. And that's that. Where's there you go. Looked pretty good. And that's all there is to it.